Now, split second decisions. We take you behind the badge for a rare look at police training. Come upstairs. Come up the stairs, sir. Come on up. Talk to us. Drop the knife. War police, do it now. You are watching the tense view projected by the firearms training system known as FATS system. It's high-tech interactive tool that's a far cry from a shooting range. Here and around the country, split-second decisions by police are under constant scrutiny. Officers tell us this training is a vital part of preparing for potential real-life confrontations. We found out words can be as important as force. Only on Eyewitness News tonight, Walt Buto takes us inside a training session where we saw firsthand how difficult an officer's decision can be. The FAT simulator is a high-tech tool local officers use to train for incidents they might face any day. Does he have any weapons or anything like that? The potential violence is on a screen. One officer projected from a computer. Police drop the weapons! Police drop the weapons! And it offers dozens of scenarios based on real life confrontations between suspects and police. The simulator is also interactive. Shots fired. Changing situations based on what officers do or say. Drop the knife, war police, do it now! Foot pursuits, car chases. Officer-involved shootings, use of force, home invasion. It's run by the Rhode Island Interlocal Trust, which ensures 1,500 officers for liability in 32 Rhode Island communities. This month, the FAT simulator is in Warwick. The officer has not responded to any checks from dispatch. The officers react differently and we're able to give feedback on what they did right, what they did wrong, what they can improve on. Statistics provided to Target 12 by the Attorney General's office indicate there were five police-involved shootings in Rhode Island last year. The grand jury cleared state police of a January incident when a vehicle was shot during a confrontation. Providence police were cleared of fatal shootings in February and March. An April fatal shooting involving a fugitive shot by Cranston police is under review. And three Warwick officers were cleared by a grand jury in the August fatal shooting of Kenneth Cunningham, a California fugitive who investigators say opened fire on police after a chase. Come on up, talk to us. We're told the training teaches police to first try to de-escalate confrontation. Come on out. The simulator allows the computer operator respond to a residence to change the scenario depending on the officer's verbal commands. Knife. Drop the knife. For example, on this domestic call involving a man who's been stabbed. Work, police. When the suspect refuses to put down the knife after several commands, hit her again. Hit her again. She's tased. <laughs> but if the officer chose to let her run down the hall, watch what happens. It's more difficult and more tense than it looks. As we discovered after facing what was said to be a low-risk call. Let me talk to you. Involving someone who was mentally ill. John, are you in there, John? Warwick Police. My lack of training leads to a deadly surprise in the basement. I gotta be honest, I did not expect him to shoot. Can I ask how you felt, how you feel right now? Was your heart racing? Yeah, absolutely. And this is a video. It's a, no, I know, I can only imagine. It's right this way, officer. Right Among the scenarios we saw, a student was talked into surrendering. We want to try to help you out, okay? Without the use of force. But in this hostage situation, the officers confront a suspect threatening to kill a child, and they have seconds to respond. Where Please stop the weapon! Are you in now? Please stop, stop the weapon! We're told this is one piece of the training puzzle in a city where officers faced more than 77,000 calls last year. And that's what officers have to face with on the street. They go from one call to another to another. Each one is different. The goal is to bring that simulator to every department in the Interlocal Trust at least once a year to train them to de-escalate a situation, but to be ready just in case they have to make a split-second decision. Walt Buteau, Eyewitness News. We're not done yet. Later tonight, we'll show you how officers' performances are evaluated after they complete the training and the high-tech way the system tracks their every move. Split-second decisions continues tonight on Eyewitness News at 11.